start with something small and simple, grow the community, grow uh, product market fit, get others to contribute and say, hey, why don't we add this to Gitcoin? Or why don't we add this to Uniswap? And why don't we grow it a little more? And then eventually what they do is they, they go get big enough, they get uh, you know, kind of powerful enough, there's enough value within the system that they're able to say, okay, we're going to reward those that helped us get this, this value and helped us get this large and powerful and, and achieve this fit. And we're going to reward them with these tokens that immediately have value. Hi, welcome to the Interaxis channel and interaxis.io. Today I want to talk about, uh, I don't know, I, I called it new tokens, I don't even know what to call this. We've been talking about how new companies or companies of the future are going to be built, what they're going to look like, how they're going to be governed, uh, the token structure. We, we, we've been talking about governance, DAOs, all those things, and I want to talk about some of these tokens that you might have seen and what they mean, how they, they got there because they were formed and they got to be uh, listed and they got their tokens out there differently than you think of most companies. So I want to talk a little bit about that, especially for those that are relatively new to crypto and relatively new to, to decentralized finance or DeFi and investing. I want to explain to you a little bit about how this has worked. So some of these tokens that you might have seen on Coinbase or Binance or Gemini or Kraken or something uh, that, that I'm going to reference, Uni is Uniswap, right? We have one inch which is a, another uh, an exchange aggregator. Recently, we had one called Gitcoin. Of course, there's, there's Sushi, and there's so many others that have been launched this way. And here's what happened. Here's where, where these in particular came from, is they didn't come from, they weren't ICOs. They weren't initial coin offerings. They didn't form the company and go, we're going to go uh, issue a token and use that to raise a bunch of money. That's one way some companies do it. That's one way some projects, protocols have done it in the past. That's not the way these did it. Here's how these did it. And I'll go into to a few of these examples just to give you uh, a, a little bit of an idea. So we'll talk about Uniswap first. So Uniswap was a brainchild of a guy named Hayden. And Hayden said, look, we need what's called an automated market maker, right? An AMM, which is essentially a, de a, a DEX, which is another acronym we use, Decentralized Exchange. And uh, I won't go into too many details on, on what an AMM is, but basically it was the idea of I want to be able to exchange, uh, in this case, let's call it ETH for DAI, right? I have ETH, I need DAI, I need to be able to exchange it. I don't want to go do KYC AML, AML. I don't want to connect to a, a centralized exchange to where I exchange ETH for DAI. Okay, I don't want to necessarily do that. I just want to connect my MetaMask or my, or my Web3 uh, wallet to some sort of site and be able to exchange ETH for DAI. And he, and he pondered how to do that. And the way he came up with it was an automated market maker or, or a kind of a, a bonding curve, which said, I'm going to have a pool of ETH and DAI in it. And it's going to have equal amounts of ETH and DAI. So if ETH at this point is worth $2,000, that means for every one ETH in the pool, there will be 2,000 die in the pool. Okay, and they're just sitting here in this pool. This is a smart contract. They're just sitting here uh, waiting to, to be utilized. And if I want to exchange one for the other, I come in and I connect my wallet and I say, look, I want to exchange ETH for die. And I put in one ETH and I extract 2,000 die. Well, now, there is, you know, two, two ETH in there and no DAI, but ideally there are a whole bunch of ETH and a whole bunch of DAI sitting in this pool. So he came up with this idea that this is how we're going to do it. We're going to create these liquidity pools, the, these pools of, of these uh, combinations, these assets, these pairs, and this is how we're going to allow people to, in a decentralized way, uh, be able to exchange. They're just going to connect their wallet. There doesn't have to be someone on the other side, okay? This smart contract is the other side of the transaction, okay? This is the counterparty. The counterparty is a smart contract that's just holding assets. So all you're doing is walking up to the pool and going, I'm going to throw one ETH in and I'm going to take 2,000 die out. Now, of course, the code here says that that's all you can do. You can't put one ETH in and take 3,000 die out. We're not going to allow that. Okay, and I get to connect my pool. Now, I'm not telling you all that to tell you how an automated market maker works. I'm telling you to tell you how Uniswap started. So it was incredibly simple. It started with ETH and DAI. And it just, he, he was able to put it out there. And it had very little 
UI, very little user interface. It was, it was simple. There were two things you could do. You could either make the exchange of ETH for DAI or you could do what's called provide liquidity, which means they needed someone to put all this ETH and all this DAI in here. So there might have been 100 ETH and 200,000 DAI, right? But someone needed to do that. So you had the ability to provide liquidity. And the idea was, if I provide liquidity, if I provide one ETH and 2,000 DAI into the pool so someone else can be able to, to make the exchange, I get rewarded. That was the whole idea. Because 0.03% of every transaction goes to the liquidity providers. Okay, and it gets split among all the liquidity providers. That was the whole idea. It was very simple. It didn't have to be a complicated website. He was able to put it out there to other decentralized finance enthusiasts, and they knew how to connect wallets, and they figured it out. There wasn't a ton of documentation. There wasn't a ton of, of uh, web front end or anything else. It was just very simple. Connect your wallet, and you can either exchange or you can be a liquidity provider. And it just grew from there. And they, they started to have more and more pairs, more and more trading pairs, and more and more liquidity because people liked the fact that they could earn income providing liquidity and that they could exchange without having to go to a centralized exchange without having to go to auto without having to put in KYC and AML put put their information in and put in and move their crypto into an exchange you can do this in a way that you didn't have to to move your crypto anywhere you could just make this transaction that was a beauty of it and of course it was so simple not saying it was easy to do but it looked simple and more and more people started to use it because it fit a need. It, it, there was very good product market fit. It could start very small with just Ethan Dye, and he was able to do that. And it just grew and grew and grew from there, and more and more people have used it to where now it's, the, it's pretty much the DEX, the AMM of choice, the, the most utilized one within the decentralized finance world. And since it's composable, others are able to build on top of it now. So what happened was that there, there formed more and more people that, that uh, started to help build, help him build for it. And more and more users in this 0.03% to liquidity providers kept getting you know, bigger and bigger and bigger. And the amount of cash flow that was going through here got to be really big. So eventually what happened, again, I'll, I'll skip some steps, but eventually what happened was... Uh, Uniswap got some funding, right? Some, some venture capitalists decided we need to give this some funding because we need to have more people to help develop for this. It is so important to have this system here. So many are building on top of it or building other applications. We need to, we, we want to contribute to this. So what happened at that point was Uniswap said, okay, we are going to now launch a token. Remember, there was no uni token when it was originally launched. The idea was we're just going to put it out there. We don't need it to be very complicated. It got more and more complex because you had more and more pairs in there. And eventually you had version 2 where you could swap from uh, ETH to some other token and it would go through DAI or go through some others and, and it, would be, it would be more complicated on the back end. But it was so simple and acquired so many users and they were able to achieve this product market fit in real time, in the real world. And so eventually what happened was when, when Uniswap raised all this money, they minted a bunch of tokens. So let's just for argument's sake say they minted you know, 100 million tokens, 100 million uni tokens. Again, just for argument's sake, I don't know exactly how many they mint, but they minted all these tokens. And what they basically said was, look, anyone who has used a wallet that has utilized Uniswap at some point, either to provide liquidity or to make an exchange, come connect your wallet and we're gonna do what's called an airdrop. Okay, we're gonna do an airdrop. And we, if you just connect your wallet, we can obviously look at the wallet address and know if you've ever used Uniswap. We'll know almost immediately if you've used it. And if you've used it, we're gonna give you 400 Uni tokens. We don't know what they're worth, but we're going to give you 400 uni tokens. We're going to airdrop you. And what is that? That's your, that's your reward. That's the reward for all these people that started using this, even though it was new, even though it started with only this one pair, and, and helped it grow and helped Uniswap get to where it was and achieve even more and more and more product market fit. The reward was all of you that helped us get there, you're going to get some uni tokens. And what happens with, with uni tokens is they, uh, originally it was just governance, right? You just, you just got to help with the governance, meaning you got to use your uni token to help vote on what happens with the Uniswap 
protocol. Now there's more cash flow there, right? There's cash that, flow that, that flows into the Uniswap token. But what they were also able to do, because Uniswap does have this DEX, this Decentralized Exchange Automated Market Maker, was at the same time they launched this token, and, and they knew, of course, exactly how many wallets had used it, times 400, exactly how many they were going to distribute because it's on-chain and it's transparent and they can do all that analysis. They then took a whole bunch of their tokens and put them into their own system. And they created, for instance, a, a uni uh, DAI pair. So what does that mean? When I connect my wallet, and I get my 400 uni tokens that were my reward for being part of the system for helping grow for actually utilizing at some point, I could go directly back to Uniswap and exchange those tokens for DAI. So if they were worth $4 at that point, because that, that's what it was trading at, remember a very open market, very free market, I could go to, to Uniswap and exchange my, my 400 uni tokens for DAI. And if at the time it was worth $4 and a die is roughly worth a dollar, basically they airdropped me $1,600 for having utilized their protocol. That was a reward. So they didn't even charge me to use it. I, you know, I paid the 0.03% every time I exchange, but they didn't charge me. They didn't say, Adam, you have to pay us for the, for the right to use this. What they said was, come use it, come try it out. We don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen. We don't know how big we're going to get. But eventually, when they did grow and get, and get larger, they rewarded those that helped with 400 uni tokens that at one point were worth $1,600. Uni has made it all the way up to, I don't know, $25, $30, something like that at some point. So if you extrapolate how much that $400 reward was, I wish I would have kept all my, my uni tokens. But that's how some of these companies are are being formed because they're starting with just an idea and so simple and then getting other DeFi users to come use it and make sure, of course, making sure it's safe, but getting other users to use it and then eventually offering a token potentially. So another one real quickly that, that I will discuss that did something similar is one that all of us kind of in the, in the, DeFi, in the, in the DeFi community really enjoy and really like uh, which is Gitcoin, right? And Gitcoin started uh, as as an idea to create, you know, what's called bounties in the in the DeFi and the crypto world, um, which is basically, um, if I if I have a project and I need someone to do something, I need someone to find uh, bugs in my program, or I need someone to write something for me. I might say here I have a bounty for for people to do this, and Gitcoin help help consolidate all those. All, here are all, all the bounties that are available. What they also did was start uh, grants, Gitcoin grants or, or funding mechanisms. So I can go to, I could go to Gitcoin and they have their grants program and every, uh, I, I'm not sure how often it is, but every so often they will have their grant cycle where those of us that have DeFi related projects can say, look, I, I'm trying to raise money, but I don't want to go to a VC or something. I want to get it from the DeFi or from the crypto community. And so I'm going to put up the information on my project on the Gitcoin grant site. And I'm going to go promote it on Twitter and, and you know, Discord and wherever else I'm going to promote it and try to get others to contribute. And if others think, oh, wait, this is good. This is good for the ecosystem, for the DeFi economy they can contribute and of course they have this quadratic funding which again we can talk about another time but the idea was it became the the place for those of us in the DeFi community to go try to raise funds from others in the community right and do so in a way where everyone knew what was happening you could talk about it on twitter and get people to come contribute and people would talk about who they who they contributed to in the grants program and who contributed to me and you could thank them on Twitter and make it very public and, tra and transparent if you want to. And we used Gitcoin for a couple of years. Well, just recently, all of a sudden, Gitcoin decided to, one, become a, you know, go, go and, and become a DAO and two, launch a token called the Gitcoin token. And anyone who had participated, either uh, getting funding or giving funding, or anyone who had participated in Gitcoin, you just connect your wallet. Again, they, of course, know every address that's transacted. They don't know the address is necessarily me, unless I've told them that, but they know every address that's transacted. So I just go connect my wallet, and bam, airdropped Gitcoin tokens. And I, I got these Gitcoin tokens. And at the same time, remember, they put Gitcoin 
you know, uh, they, they contributed the Gitcoin Dai pool and the Gitcoin USDC pool on Uniswap and Sushi and wherever else, so that the moment I got these, I could then go turn them into Dai or turn them into USDC if I wanted to. Again, start with something small and simple, grow the community, grow uh, product market fit, get others to contribute and say, hey, why don't we add this to Gitcoin or why don't we add this to Uniswap and why don't we grow it a little more? And then eventually what they do is they, they go get big enough, they get uh, you know, kind of powerful enough, there's enough value within the system that they're able to say, okay, we're going to reward those that helped us get this, this value and helped us get this large and powerful and, and achieve this fit. And we're going to reward them with these tokens that immediately have value. You can immediately turn those around. This is not like waiting for a company to go public. They're already public by virtue of the fact that they've already put this on some sort of AM like Uniswap or, or Sushi Swap or something. This is really interesting because this is how a lot of groups and companies are, are in projects, protocols are starting to be formed where they can put out a little bit of code and do something really small and see if they can get some users and grow it and grow it and grow it and then they reward those users for helping them get there. They don't charge them for it, they reward them for it. This is really interesting. So some of those tokens that you see where you can buy on Coinbase and Gemini and, and others, this is where they started. They didn't come out with the idea of we're going to launch a token and, and be worth you know $100 million. They just said, we have a very small idea. We can make it very simple. We don't have to have anything hugely robust at first. We will let it grow organically and iterate. Now, of course, since it's crypto, since there's composability, since it's DeFi, growing organically is actually relatively fast. It's actually relatively quick when you look at it in traditional finance or traditional business sense. But in the crypto DeFi sense, it, it's actually, you know, it, it takes a little while to get those users and, and to see that growth and see them build. But this is how a lot of projects uh, have, have built is they've started relatively small and then eventually they launched a token and it could either be for governance, it could be to share revenue, uh, it could be for both, it could be a utility, whatever it might be, but then they decide to launch a token later to reward those who have helped the, the ecosystem or helped the project grow. So I want to talk a little bit about, we've been talking about the companies of the future and what they're going to look like and this is how some of those companies that are going to be so important in, in the future, this is how they've launched. This is how they launched their token. This is where they derive a lot of value because they let people use it. They let people iterate through and grow it organically. And then they finally reward all those people that actually use the protocol. So hope you enjoyed this. Hope you'll subscribe. Hope you'll check us out on Twitter at Interaxis8. And we'll see you in the next video.